Okay then, to celebrate my new camera, I'm going to show you the all of the digital cameras that I have used over the years. Not all of them have been used to uh, make YouTube videos, because this one wasn't. All the other ones were. This was my first ever digital camera. Um, it is the Kodak EZ200. It will shoot video, but there, there is no removable storage on this. It doesn't take SD cards. I don't think SD cards were even invented when I got this. Um, when did I get this? It must have been somewhere around 97, perhaps. Not at all sure. Um, maximum res resolution of 640 by 480. Um, it's kind of awful, <laughs> but it was digital cameras were new when this came out. I find the um, the, the name of it interesting in this EZ200 because the price was £200. There's not a lot I can tell you about it. It's got a focus ring so you can do close-up or distant shots. The problem with that is there's no viewfinder or rather no 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 screen so you know you're looking through there to line up your shot but you have no way of knowing whether it's in focus or not if you use the focus ring so generally I never did what this camera got used for most was as a webcam it is a really quite a nice webcam it's a piss poor digital stills camera and it's an even worse digital video camera because the storage is virtually non-existent you can't stick an SD card in it you would fill it up with video footage in a matter of I, I don't think you could even take a minute of footage with it um, I'm not even sure if I ever tried I possibly did I I can't remember if I tried I certainly didn't have a lot of success I think um, it was okay for the time in I had a website that I was putting on photographs of the area that I lived in and grew up in and stuff like that and back then everything was dial up so the fact that it took really small crappy grainy low resolution photos with small file sizes was quite good um, but for anything else uh, yeah <laughs> it was a handheld portable webcam that just took stills something like that okay this is going to be some dodgy editing now because I'm videoing this bit last where it's going to appear on the video first everything that appears after this if it seemed a little bit odd is because I shot that before I shot this yeah because I'm that organized I'd forgotten all about this camera moving on oh yes and everything that follows are the cameras that I used for my YouTube videos if I didn't say that already okay whoops there's me trying to sit down on the floor and tripping over Fuji fine picks something or other what is it 2800 Z zoom um this shock horror back in what was it 2000 ish 2001 2002 I don't remember cost 300 pounds it is frankly by modern standards a piece of junk but back then this was quite cool it, it's got a maximum of two megapixels for stills um, for video it's got a maximum of 640 by 480 if memory serves I've only used this on a couple of videos there was one where I went walking around town oh, a year or two ago and I used it for the one on my other channel where uh, the dogs in the garden when they were still puppies and I was doing that in like ultra low resolution mode which is why it looks bloody awful so I mean it's it's not for the time it was quite good but now yeah yeah so that's that let's get that out of the way second camera was this this is a Sony you know what I can't bloody remember it's written on it somewhere. Sony Cyber Shot. Here we go. DSC H1. I mean, really, if I was going to do a decent job here, I would show you all the all the functions and 
everything but there's no batteries in it there are in that one but there aren't in this and I was going to record some footage footage with each why can't I speak I was going to record some footage with each one you try saying that at midday okay um, but yes no batteries in half of them and the batteries that are in that fine picks thing it says they're dead they're they're what are, I think they're Sony batteries actually from Poundland this is looking more like an Ashens video by the minute um, yeah so DSC H1 by Sony I do like Sony cameras I really do well Sony stuff in general really um, Try not to sound like a fanboy. I didn't actually use this to do many of my YouTube videos. The main reason being, while it's fantastic for taking stills, and it's about 5 megapixels, um, taking video footage, it just <sighs> destroys the batteries in in because it's it's not using a rechargeable like lithium ion battery or anything like that it's just taking two double A's I mean come on really even that that thing there that's taking four double A's and they want to put two double A's in this and shoot video yeah so uh, the batteries tended to run out after about three minutes no exaggerations so uh, I think I tried that about twice on some of my very early gameplay videos and gave up and went back to using that yeah uh, did I yes I must have used that shock horror I've used it for more stuff than I remember hmm okay so that's that that was about 300 pounds when it was new there's a pattern here you will notice as we move on the camera I have been using up until yesterday is this beast this is a big camera um, those who have met me at things like replay and um, the, the, the thingy the meetup at Spalding will have seen this camera and noted possibly that it's a big big bastard of a camera and very heavy it is a Panasonic Panasonic Lumix DMC FZ50 DMC I just think some rap band yeah it's big it's heavy it's a super zoom like the Sony only the difference here is you focus and zoom with these two rings like you would on an SLR which makes focusing and zooming a much more precise thing. Um, it is a fantastic stills camera. I mean, it's 10 megapixels, so by modern standards, it's showing its age. But it takes great shots. I mean, yes, an SLR would take better shots because you've got a bigger sensor. But so long as you keep it in the 1 or 200 ISO range, this takes fantastic stills video it's no slouch I mean it's not great compared to your modern high definition camera like the one I'm using here but for like standard definition and as long as you can live without high dynamic range kind of colors and stuff it, it does the job really well I've been using it for what three four however long you know that for the most part on my gameplay videos I've been using this little beauty and guess what when it was new it cost about 300 pounds <laughs> yeah there is a pattern there um, which I'm about to break because the other camera that I use on occasion this is my like rough and ready going out need something bad weather want to just stick it in my pocket is this the Kodak ZX1 it's a high definition camera um, but the lens is tiny so while you get a nice 720p image size thing and the ludicrously huge file size to go with it the image quality itself isn't really any better than you would get off of the Lumix um, or at least not much better though I have used it for a couple of gameplay videos recently and uh, it wasn't bad actually I, I don't know if I would have stuck with that or not but well I've got this thing now which I'll show you in a minute 
So yeah, th this thing didn't cost three hundred pounds. <laughs> Uh, this was a Christmas present from Andrea, and I believe it cost about £70. I don't know what they go for now. That was a couple of years ago. The thing I have found with this, you have to have a fast SD card in it. If you've got a, a slow one, and I have got a couple of slow ones, the audio and video get all out of sync, and then it's horrible. Um, yeah, it's... It's by no means ever going to shoot high-quality video, but when you just want something you can stuff in your pocket for like opportunist video shooting it's great I, I take this on holiday whenever we go anywhere uh, I've quite often got it in my pocket or in my bag if we're just I don't know going to Sheffield or, or I'm going somewhere on the train or you know yes portable opportunist good thing mm. take two because software is stupid I won't go into an explanation for that. <clears throat> this is the camera I'm now using. Well, actually, it's not. The camera I'm now using is the Panasonic Lumix that I just showed you. But this is my new camera um, that I will be using for all videos, except when I'm out and using the little Kodak from time to time. It is a Sony Handycam. I'm reading it because it's a big, long name that I'll forget. Handycam HDR CX 115 E. They do like to give their cameras really big, stupid, massive names. Why not just call it Cool Camera Number One? It's a cool camera. 3.1 megapixels. That is referring to the, um, it can take like still photos. So for that kind of thing, I will be sticking with the Panasonic. Thank you very much. 10 megapixels beats 3.1 any day. But what this thing will do, which the Panasonic won't, is high dynamic range, high definition, super lovely image quality, and all kinds of bells and whistles and nice things. Unlike the Panasonic, this thing isn't covered in buttons. I'm, I'm kind of used to having a button to do absolutely everything, uh, and this thing is all done by a touch screen. This takes a little bit of getting used to if you're used to an iPhone, which I am in that it's resistive, you've got to press it quite hard. I, I was like kind of brushing it and thinking, why isn't it working? Because you have to push it hard. Um, but it works. You can customize your menu so the functions you think you will use the most are the first ones on the menu. Um, and then everything else, you press that show more thing and you can cycle through everything. And It's cool. Yeah, you're not seeing anything there because I've got the uh, lens cover closed there, see, very nice close-up view of sofa, how very ashen-ish, yeah. What can I tell you about it? Well, you'll have seen the image quality of it by now, it is high definition, it will record in super uber mega high definition, well no it won't actually, super uber mega high definition will be 1080p, this doesn't do that, it does 1080i, you've got different levels of compression, the highest one goes up to 24 megabits per second, which is, I haven't used that yet, the one I just shot was at something like mm, 17 megabits per second, something like that, I don't know, um, I'm not going to try that until I've put a bigger SD card in it because you know what I'm like with SD cards that they fill up halfway through a video and things look all very shoddy which has a certain charm to it so I don't mind when it happens yeah I mean there's not a lot else I can tell you because I haven't really figured out the finer points I, I know the basics I can make it do what I want to do it will probably do lots of other things that I don't necessarily want to do um, it fits really nicely in the hand, I'll say that. Let's, let's just... There. And when you're holding it like that, you've got the zoom control right there. And if you want to take a photo, the button for that is just directly behind it. Which is cool. What I find slightly odd is the positioning of the record button. Which is, uh... That one that I can't reach. <laughs> you have to use your other hand. Unless you've got a really weird thumb that can bend round corners or something. It's, it's, it, you see that, the silver thing there. Um, battery here. 
that charges I, it, oddly it doesn't come with a separate charger you charge it with it plugged into the camera and you, you plug the camera in which is okay in that you can use the charger to power the camera if your battery is flat but not so good if you got like the way I do things with my Panasonic is I have two batteries and I always have one in the camera and one sitting in the charger and when it's finished charging it just stops charging so whenever I flatten the one in the camera I whip that out stick it in the charger and replace it with the one that was in the charger you can't do that with this um, unless there's a separate charger you can buy so it's like swings and roundabouts you can plug it in and power it off of the charger but you can't charge another battery separately without buying another charger or something blah rhubarb and all of that I think that's about all I can tell you. You can take photos. You've got a mode select here to take photos. If you want to, I don't. There's your, your record button there. There are some other buttons here. That puts it into auto mode. That turns it off. I don't know what they do. I haven't bothered to read the instructions. Or if I have, I've forgotten. You turn it off by closing it like that, which makes sense. Manual lens closing cover thing. Microphones just there. Really good mics as well. I, I'm very pleased and relieved that I don't sound completely different using this camera from how I sound using this camera, where when I use that Kodak I sound, well like someone else which isn't good 25 by zoom uh, optical zoom it's got a, a stability do for what's it do hickey thing so that it gives you nice steady footage when you're recording even if you're shaking it about a bit which this does as well shock horror but you'll probably notice whenever I, I'm taking videos where I'm holding it I don't know out and about perhaps I don't know like the one I did in the video I took in Scarborough a few years ago that was quite nice and steady and everything where when I take videos of this which has no steadying what not in it it looks like I'm standing in an earthquake not quite sure how you stand in an earthquake but I'm standing somewhere that's having an earthquake that yes okay Exmoor Ah, two byte increase in sensitivity. X more. Okay. They're naming their doohickey, funky sensitivity gadgets after some moorland thing in Britain. But if it works, it's good. And what it is actually good at as well is low light. This thing has a low light option when shooting video that is cool and works. So I'll be able to get some very amusing and entertaining footage of the dogs who always go completely demented at 10 o'clock at night. Bang on, 10 o'clock. Max is on his back, legs waving in the air, going rah, rah, rah. And I haven't ever been able to capture that because this camera is shit in low light. Okay, think that will do. Um, so yeah, that's my cameras that I've been using and am using. Mm, thank you for watching.